Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Zia and I'm a software engineer at Twitter right now. Today I'm going to talk about three things. First thing is what is my background and why am I talking to you right now? The second thing is I'm going to talk about how I did it, how I prepared for my interviews. And the third thing is I'm going to talk a little bit about the tools and resources that I highly recommend that I use in my own process in getting uh, the job at Twitter. So let's get into it. So here's my background. Uh, I'm originally from Malaysia. I grew up there, born and raised in Malaysia, which is a really small island in Borneo. Uh, and then I spent about you know 18 years in Malaysia. I uh, went to school there. And then after that, I had this opportunity to come to the United States for college, which I did. So I took that opportunity and I went to this college called Lewis and Clark State College in Lewis and Idaho. So that's where I spent a year and a half in college. And at the time, I wasn't even doing computer science. I was actually doing an associate's degree in civil engineering. And then after that, I went to Gonzaga University over in Spokane, Washington, which is eastern part of Seattle. And I finished up my undergrad degree uh, over there. So when I was there, I decided, you know, hey, maybe let's try something different. I didn't want to do civil engineering anymore. Uh, it felt kind of kind of dry, a little bit boring for me. So I wanted to try something a little bit different. And then I remember the first time I took a Python programming course and it was super fun because I built this little like snake-like game out of it and I thought it was super cool. So I took that opportunity and I switched my major when I was at Gonzaga. Um, I lost some credits in the process, but it was okay, I made up for it. Um, so I spent two years in Gonzaga and then when I graduated, I didn't have any jobs lined up at the time. So um, I just sent out like my resume, I just put together like this, you know, mumbo jumbo and then put it, I call it a resume. I sent it out to as many people as I could. And one trick that I used at the time was I wrote this Python script that basically collected all the email addresses from Craigslist for people who are looking for software engineers. Uh, that worked out actually pretty good. Uh, I think I collected about 500-ish uh, emails total from the entire period. So I ran that for about two weeks, I think. And I was matching on specific keywords only, so like software engineer and not like just random computer help things. So after that, um, I received, I'd say about like 20% return rate. Uh, people start responding back and then they were asking me for like phone calls, technical screens, and stuff like that. And fast forward about four weeks in, I finally landed a job at this startup uh, in Kirkland. And at the time, I didn't have a car or anything, and I was living over in Linwood, which is like all the way up north of like Seattle. And I had to take like a 40 minute bus just to get to my work. And after that, you know, I, when I was at the startup, I tried to learn as much as much as possible. I didn't have a solid background. I didn't come from a name brand school. So when I was, uh, when I was at the startup, I was working along people who worked at Amazon, Microsoft, uh, LinkedIn, like all these big brand name companies that people associate with when they talk about computer science, right? So I was working along all these people and then knowing that I'm probably not as strong as them, I tried to be the sponge in the group. So I absorbed everything I could. Whatever they threw at me, I absorbed it, I worked on it, and then I internalized that. I tried to pick up as much as I can. We're in the process of doing a lot of things like integrating with Amazon AWS. Uh, getting into like microservices framework. And... It was a good transition period if you think about it. So this is part two. This is where I want to talk about how I prepare for my job search. Right out of college, I didn't do really well because I didn't prepare myself. I didn't know what a technical screen was. I had all of this knowledge that I just acquired in college, but I didn't know how to put that into the context of a technical screen. So I thought to myself, what should I do differently this time? So what I did differently this time was I measured myself, figure out what I was good at, what I was not as good at, and then what I should improve on. It was a pretty systematic approach to it. Right? So I broke down based on things like data structures, 
algorithms and system design and that further broke down within algorithms like breadth for search, depth for search, uh, recursion, permutation, combination, stuff like that. And I basically tested myself on each aspect of it at the start of my preparation. Pro tip, pick a language that's not very verbose so that you can write your code on the whiteboard really, really quickly. Like an interview experience is sort of a standardized test. Uh, like companies, big companies like Facebook, Google, they all ask sort of similar questioning uh, format. So they ask questions about like binary search, data structures, algorithms, system design. So these are sort of the things that you can kind of prepare for if you've done some practice in advance. So I'm not advocating for studying just to get through those interviews. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm really saying here is there are a lot of things that don't come to you on a day-to-day -day basis. Like a binary tree, for example, you're not gonna use that very often in your work. So I'm not saying that you should study just for the sake of passing the interviews. But what I am saying though is you should definitely prepare before your interview. And that means you have to look up all these basic data structures that you learn in college, binary trees, heaps, linked lists, arrays, all that stuff. Right, you have to be aware of what those are, how to use them in what scenarios, and what they're sort of how they're implemented underneath the hood. So just kind of a basic overview. And then the next step is algorithms. How do you get better at algorithms? Algorithms is finding a way to solve a problem efficiently. There are multiple ways of doing that. There's what you call brute force approach which is basically just forcing your way through the solution until you find a viable solution. So in a lot of interviews, that actually is okay to start as a starting point. And then you kind of optimize your way along. For system design questions, now a lot of people ask me about this, how do you actually prepare for system design questions? And my answer to that is, you have to read a lot. Basically, system design questions are different from data structures and algorithms. There's no really one good or bad way of answering a system design problem. And the reason for that is, a lot of the times, you can basically solve those problems uh, using technology that you already know. For example, when I look at an app, I like to think, how would I design this app from the ground up? Right? I would think about like the UI point of view, like what happens when, uh, when a certain button is clicked. So when I click this tab, for example, what happens? How would I propagate that information? So those are sort of like the little things I think about and I do that as a mental exercise. I try to take that as far as I can and then I look up on the internet to figure out you know, how the actual implementation goes for those apps. And if you go to websites like High Scalability, you can see a lot of postings of how different websites scale their sites basically. Like so so here's my top five resources that I highly recommend if you're preparing for your job right now. So the first one is Cracking the Coding Interview. So this book is definitely one of the best. Uh, I highly, highly recommend this book. It's a good primer to basic technical interviewing questions and kind of have some, some, some sort of expectations for uh, what to expect in a technical interview. The second book is Elements of Programming Interviews, so EPI for short. This is another great book. The way I highly recommend doing is uh, going through cracking the coding interview to get just sort of your base set up and kind of understand you know, different ways of solving different problems and then jumping straight into elements of programming interviews and then go through those questions because from my perspective, I see that elements of programming interviews or EPI for short, uh, is great for doing questions that combine multiple different data structures and the questions are a little bit more abstract and they kind of encourage you to think more creatively and then use different data structures or modify data structures that you already know to fit that sort of problem space. So I definitely highly recommend that. 
and my allocation for time was I did maybe like 20% of the time on cracking a coding interview and then the rest of the time 80% I just spent that on EPI. Another tool that I recommend is getting your own fine point marker and the reason for this is that a lot of technical interviews involve writing code on a whiteboard and a lot of times if you've never been to one the marker would be you know out of ink or it doesn't work great or the colors is not you know legible on the whiteboard so don't leave that to chance bring those with you to your to your interview right so i highly recommend ultra fine markers because i find that i can write slightly more and it's more readable on the whiteboard and my fourth tip is to go on websites right now like RefDash, for example, or PRAMP, uh, which are basically websites where they match an interviewer with someone who's looking for an interviewing exercise. So what that means is that uh, RefDash, for example, they have a list of interviewers from Google, Microsoft, Amazon, who are ready to interview for a price. So you can go on that website and you can pick a few interviewers that you're interested in and at the end of it, the interviewer will give you a list or a report basically saying your strength and your weaknesses and then he'll kind of coach you through the entire process. So for me, I went through that process, I found that super helpful and I highly recommend that you take a look there as well. Uh, that's it from me. Uh, that's basically my experience from interviewing at you know all the top companies and my key learnings so if you liked it uh, Subscribe and then I will keep posting more content. All right, cool. Thank you. See ya